Hey everyone, welcome. This is uh, the very start of uh, some of our videos that we're trying to do, introduce you to Republic Pain Specialists. Um, I'm David Gaskin, this is Josh Dunlap. Um, basically with the staff, we're not the only group here, but uh, we got a lot of staff that helps out. Um, let me give you some background on Republic. Um, I Bless my heart, I got to start uh, Republic. I think I uh, did anesthesia for a lot of years uh, as a CRNA, advanced practice nurse. Um, I decided to go back and do a fellowship in uh, pain management. I went to the Texas Christian University Advanced Pain Management Fellowship. Um, I went through the second class. I was one of the first 50 people uh, in the United States to get the non-surgical pain management certification. Um, so I'm kind of proud of that. Uh, based on that, um, I decided to, to open my own practice. Um, and I know that really breaks away from the, the world today in medicine. You know, we just don't see private practitioners anymore. It just doesn't really happen. You, uh, I feel like I've went back in time 50 years. If, if some of us old guys, just Josh has got to let, just listen to me about this because he don't know about those. <laughs> But us old guys remember the days when there were family practice guys just hanging, hang a shingle out and just started seeing patients. Um, those things changed with time. So the doctors started, physicians, nurse practitioners, all of them started forming bigger groups and uh, trying to gain leverage on the insurance companies essentially to get better reimbursements. Um, uh, there's a lot of different reasons, but essentially I, I just decided to hang a shingle out um, uh, start seeing patients and shaking hands and seeing if I could help people. And um, so far, so good. We've grown. Um, we started our practice in, in the uh, very early 2019, uh, just myself and my daughter um, answering the damn phone and, and uh, taking patients. Um, we, we gradually built uh, to the point where I needed to, to help. And, uh, you know, my wife says Josh is, is just a younger version of me. He's totally, totally skilled, um, also uh, fellowship trained. You graduated in 19? Uh, correct. 2019. So just uh, uh, two years after me. So um, he's probably got, he's got very close to the amount of pain experience. So we, we're out here just trying to uh, take care of that pain patient in ways that, uh, you may not notice in, in a lot of other pain practices. Um, our ability to use ultrasound, I think, puts us head and shoulders um, above a lot of people. Uh, treating peripheral nerves, um, you know, major joints, minor joints, all of our, our uh, small joints, hands, carpal tunnels, um, treating headaches with uh, C2 dorsal root ganglions, greater occipital blocks, um, just, uh, just so many different things that you're just, I don't think you're gonna see in that average pain practice and, and that's what sets us apart. So, thinking about those things, kind of pushing the envelope, Josh, I, I know you're as skilled as anybody. Um, tell them some of the things that, you know, let you get involved here instead of me. Uh, I will um, dominate, the, dominate the conversation if somebody <laughs> lets me. So, um, let's, let's talk about some of the things we're doing that, that kind of break the, uh, push that envelope in pain. Certainly. Um, you know, I think uh, my background started kind of traditionally in a, um, as far as pain goes in, um, you know, practicing with two, two physician anesthesiologists doing a lot of um, axial pain, uh, that kind of stuff, fluoroscopic guided. Um, you know, I think my background in ultrasound um, as well as yours, and, and I got to give you credit, you know, that's where a lot of a lot of the things I've learned through Maverick and different different teachings like that, um, you know, I think that's what kind of sets us apart. Um, you know, our ability to diagnose things with ultrasound, um, help help folks, uh, you know, in, in multimodal ways that ultrasound can do that. You know, traditional fluoroscopic procedures can't do. Um, you know, there's there's just a ton of different things and, and uh, minutia that you can see with an ultrasound that otherwise you wouldn't be able to treat uh, or even find, um, you know, multiple, um, just just a whole list of different things that, that can be done. Um, a big, well, I'm, right now the biggest thing that we're seeing, and, and 
I think we're certainly promoting it a lot, is the stellate ganglion block. Um, you know, the long COVID syndrome and uh, the symptoms that everyone's having following a co about a COVID, the symptoms they're having, this fatigue and brain fog and uh, headaches and, and uh, insomnias, uh, the change in their smell and taste, um, these things are really debilitating to a lot of people. Um, and really the only providers out there that are trained to do a stellate ganglion block, which is really the only thing they found that's helping this of all the gimmicks and all the things they're trying. Um, the old pain guys were trained with fluoroscopy with x-ray yeah. and you just cannot get that an, an accurate nerve block, a sympathetic nerve block when you can only see the bone. The bone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's the that's the beauty of ultrasound is you can see the soft tissues, you can see the nerves, you can see the arteries and vessels. This target that we're hitting lives between two muscle groups, and, and if you don't see that, you're not able to visualize that. Visualize your needle going down. It's it's going to be almost impossible to replicate that to be accurate and to give the same uh, consistent successful result time and time again. Um, and I think we've kind of proven that uh, through our track record with treating folks with prosmia. Um, you know, right now we're we're close to a 90% success rate in treating the folks with distorted taste, distorted smell, among some of the other long COVID, you know, for lack of a better descriptor, long COVID symptoms. Um, you know, I think Dave and I both kind of agree that, you know, long COVID may be a misnomer. Um, you know, I think I think these are all dysfunctional um, functions of our dysfunctional autonomic nervous system or dysautonomia. Um, these are all symptoms of that that COVID has caused uh, in, in, in our bodies. And, and we're seeing that, you know, we're, we're just seeing that the distorted taste, the distorted smell is just a couple aspects of that. And when you kind of take a step back and, and view the bigger picture and view all the other symptoms that come about, um, you know, these are truly dysautonomic um, issues and symptoms and we're trying to treat the underlying cause of that and all these symptoms are getting better um, and that's the crux of everything we do at republic is find what's bothering you and treat the cause don't put a band-aid on the symptoms so um, we're going to get some more videos out try to let people know what we do what's available for you and, and hopefully educate a little more about what's the possibility so um, stay tuned down the road folks see you